Uh, the question is really around uh, service for uh, under what we would call in the United States under the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, the ADA in, in the United States uh, requires uh, transit systems uh, such as mine um, to be able to provide alternative service if it's not available, uh, if people are not able to make use of what we call the fixed route system. Um, now, uh, I think it's great, as you described your son, um, to be able to, to make use of that fixed route system as, as long as he can. And that uh, is very, very important. We find that uh, people uh, without, uh, uh, even in mobility devices, are able to make better use of their time, have more freedom, get more places work done easily uh, if they can. For people who can't, we provide um, a, what we call a lift service. It is a door-to-door -door service uh, um, that actually picks up uh, and delivers. We actually do it, uh, it uh, the, the law requirement is curb-to-curb. Uh, -curb. We actually provide door-to-door -door and at uh, times our operators uh, actually go through the door to be able to help uh, people. Uh, it is, uh, uh, it's a very expensive service. Doesn't mean that it shouldn't be done, but it's a very expensive service. Uh, and so you always kind of try to find, can you kind of put the lives together? That means that uh, uh, that the trip isn't as a, uh, efficient for the individual as sometimes it could be. Uh, they have to <clears throat> also have a window of when they can be picked up uh, uh, and be available from the start of that window through the end of it, generally a half hour. Uh, so it doesn't work as conveniently, but is available for anybody who has no choice but to be able to make use of that. We also find out, not the, the situation for your, uh, for your son, but we also find um, that, uh, that the lack of pedestrian access um, limits uh, people, uh, particularly the frail elderly, to get to a bus stop. And so one of our real efforts as a region has been to try to invest in those sidewalks, the safe crossings of streets, other things to be able to make sure that those are not the barrier to be able to use the fixed route. But all of that is important for service, uh, uh, I think, and, and that's the way it is in the United States. I can't speak to what the, the specifics are of the law here. That's one of the things I hope to learn more about and share some of our experiences. Thank you. Somebody else? There's a question down here. Would you like to stand up and use a big voice? Yes. Um, uh, just going back to the benefits you discussed um, uh, from building close to the uh, street how you said. Um, have you found any alternative ways to fund that sort of thing, such as getting developed? Um, actually, on the first of the streetcar, and again, the, uh, we're kind of using these phrases in a way that I know exactly what I mean, but it's kind of a little bit, it's got to be confusing uh, to you. Uh, light rail uh, are, for us, uh, vehicles that really are uh, both high speed, uh, high capacity, carry about 360 people when fully loaded, uh, two car trains, um, and they really fly 52 miles uh, in our system. The urban circulator is really a, a smaller vehicle. It's the streetcar, um, and it's what uh, a number of visitors to the Portland region have seen. That uh, really is about 90 people fully loaded. Uh, when we built that first streetcar alignment, the businesses along it, uh, uh, the Legacy 
Hospital, uh, Portland State University, and uh, Powell Books, the largest independent uh, uh, book uh, seller in the United States. Some of you have probably spent time at Powell's if you've been in Portland, you, I think it's required before you can leave uh, to be able to go there. Uh, it, uh, they, in fact, chose to be able to pay uh, for about a third of the cost of the capital construction by imposing what is called a local improvement district um, and uh, essentially taxing themselves. Um, that has happened to a degree in other spots where the <coughs> businesses uh, that are along that commercial interest uh, have done so. Now, uh, you know, it, it can be selfish, that is, it really helped uh, their own business. Uh, very frankly, Michael Powell, Powell's Books, who now is the president of the Public Streetcar Board, in which I serve as well, uh, really sees as a, as a part of the investment in the community. They were willing to do that. I think they see real benefit in the community. They see it certainly in their property values as well, um, but it's really a part of it. So the answer is yes, um, we are, we are uh, doing that. Um, on, on the light rail, um, it has been less so, although we did enter into a public-private partnership with Bechtel to help build our airport light rail. Uh, where they were able to receive uh, development rights, 99-year uh, lease development rights for some very underutilized land, uh, which is still underutilized, and I think they're rethinking whether that was a very good idea, but we got a light rail line out of it. Uh, hi, um, I was intrigued by your comments about park and ride and how that can lead to more urban sprawl. Um, and I also recall some data that came out of Western Australia maybe a year or two ago where they did a survey of registration plaques, car number plaques, at a park and ride facility and found that most of the vehicles were registered at addresses that were used in Australia and turned within two weeks of the park and ride facility. How do we get people out of their cars, onto their feet or onto their bikes, to take advantage of the infrastructure that already exists? Well, that's one of the big challenges, certainly, is, that, um, is uh, to be able to get it. What we find, actually, in the United States is less that, uh, that people drive very short distances, um, but they drive to the uh, park and ride that is nearest their destination, not nearest their, their home. <laughs> uh, and uh, we see that those park and rides that we actually have a prohibition on any park and ride closer than five miles to the central business district. Uh, but those that are just uh, outside of that, uh, they fill up the earliest uh, in the morning, uh, uh, and uh, we do license plate surveys to track kind of where they're coming from, uh, and many of them have passed a number of other park and rides before they get to that. Uh, now, with the price of uh, fuel going up, other things, I think that'll start making it. But I think also, one has to be able to have safe routes to be able to get...